So now in this video, we're going to look at the 7400 integrated circuit. It's part of the 7400 series of integrated circuits. And the particular one we're going to use is the 74HC00. So that is a quad. There are four two input. There you can see input, 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 NAND gates. So NAND is a not AND gate. It's like an AND gate, except for the output is inverted. So at the AND gate, if any inputs were low, then the output was low. But here you can see with the NAND gate, if any inputs are low, then the output is high. If both inputs are high, with the AND gate, the output's high. But with the NAND gate, not AND gate, if both inputs are high, then the output is low. And so there's a lot more uses than just being the opposite of an AND gate. But uh, being the opposite of the AND gate is the most uh, straightforward. So we're going to give these signals here. When it comes to the switch, it's going to be held low. It's going to be held zero volts until we close the switch. And then you can see there's no resistance there. So that'll bring it right to five volts. Pretty straightforward. Trim pot, we can go below 2.5 volts, above 2.5 volts. Somewhere around 2.5 volts is where it's going to go from a high when you get closer to the positive supply or low when you get closer to the negative supply. Probably not exactly 2.5 volts but somewhere around there. So down here will be low and then up there will be high. Pretty straightforward. I'm going to use a 1 kilo ohm resistor at the output to protect an LED. That will keep current to about 3 milliamps of current. The output's going to be pretty much 5 volts and that's really about the most current you want to put through there. I've been putting more current through the outputs but I should have really been keeping them at about 4 milliamps or less. So that will give us 3 milliamps. We got 5 volts. The LED is going to drop about 2 and uh, so we'll have 3 volts across the resistor for 3 milliamps of current. Stuff we covered before. And so the uh, basic layout is we have to power this. We got the positive supply to pin 14 and then the negative side of the supply ground our 0 volt reference point to pin 7 right there and as far as uh, I can remember all of my 7400 series integrated circuits so far have that uh, power powering right there. Now we got the input input output when you start at the top there and then again input input output input input output input input output and uh, the output is usually labeled either Y or X and then you usually have an A and B input for each one of them. There's one two three four. So let's get to the breadboard. So now the first thing I want to point out is you don't want to leave inputs floating. You can see that I can make current flow when we shouldn't. It went up to 2. Sometimes it stays at 2 right there. So I have these two inputs floating. I'll attach the jumpers to it right now. And now I connected all inputs to either the positive or the negative supply either directly or through a resistor. And there you can see it's uh, much more stable. That's the way it should be. And here is the circuit up close. So I have pin 14 to the positive supply and then pin 7 there to the negative supply. To keep the inputs from floating there I have direct connectors from the positive supply. Over here I have the uh, negative. Since we got the uh, negative supply there I have our unused inputs going to the positive supply right there. So different colors and uh, so they stand out a little bit more. But in any case, there we have our trim pot, our adjustable voltage. Right now it's low and the uh, switch here, we have a low input going through that resistor. That's always connected there. So it's just separated top to bottom. If I hit the switch, the LED stays on. So the output is high. And because uh, you can see that side of the LED goes to ground. Of course, the longer lead up top, shorter lead down here. You got to put it in the right way or else it won't light up. Now we have a high input there and I close the switch makes a connection to the positive side of the supply up there and the LED goes off. So now the output is low. You may see the switch kind of working its way out. I rarely put it in this spot and so this spot's not quite used to it. It's kind of pushing it out. Cheap boards will kind of accept them right away and then not work as well. These better boards kind of squeeze it out for a while but you still make good connection with other stuff for a while. But uh, in any case, that's about it. We got high, and then once we got high there, then the output goes low. If that's low, it doesn't matter how much I hit the switch, the output is going to stay high. And now we'll zoom back. As I said, we should expect 3 milliamps of current. This isn't always completely accurate, but there you can see 3 milliamps. If I turn the trim pot up, 
and hit the switch. Now you can see there's milliamps of current. That's what we want. Whereas when we had that floating before, we had all kinds of stray uh, current. So we're looking good. Now the LED is on, so we got current again. But in any case, that's the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other ones I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell, all that. Donate to Patreon if you can. That helps out the most. I have links down in the description. But just watching as many videos as you can helps out a ton too. Thanks to people that do that. I will see you in the next video.